standing in the National Synchrotron Light Source 2, NSLS 2. It's a brand new synchrotron. We've just finished building it. It's the world's brightest synchrotron. That means it has the most number of x-rays in the smallest angular spot. Uh, and so it can transform what kind of experiments we can do with x-rays. This place was built to produce the brightest source of x-rays in the world to carry out a whole range of new experiments. We can do experiments from chemistry to biology to astrophysics, all in the same facility. It's a very large, expensive machine. So only national labs are the only types of places that we can build it, and we built it for the rest of the country and the rest of the world to come and use. So NSS2 is a synchrotron. That means it produces x-rays by accelerating electrons around in a ring. Around that ring, we have devices. We call them insertion devices that produce the x-rays, and then we transport them down a beamline to an experiment. And we will have as many as 60 beamlines here when this is fully built out. That means 60 experiments happening at the same time. This facility which you see behind me is X -ray, an X-ray powder diffraction facility. So essentially we use X-rays to look at uh, powder materials and we have all sorts of examples around ourselves in terms of powders. It can be free powders, it can be uh, pellets. Uh, even if you look at a piece of uh, metal, for example, this is a powder. So we can put those things into the X-ray beam and then we, we use this technique called diffraction. So essentially we look at the interactions between the X-rays and the materials to have an, informa an information about what the material is all about, what is the composition and the structure of the material. We can look at the materials in a variety of different conditions at low temperatures, temperatures high temperatures. Uh, we can vary the pressure, we can have different gas environments, and we are using this very, very intense X-ray beam to look at the transformation of the material as a function of time, with time, uh, depending on those uh, external conditions. One particular capability of this beamline is uh, the, th the thing you can see right be my, behind me, which is a robot. So we use this robot to manipulate the samples. What we used to do in like hours or minutes before, I mean now we can do that in seconds and the robot help, helps us to really switch from one sample to another real quick and we can, uh, we can get a lot of diffraction data out of, uh, out of uh, those uh, samples. The coherent soft x-ray beamline here was created to create the highest coherent flux available and that's really useful for looking at um, textures, electronic textures in such materials such as high temperature superconductors and other advanced materials. X-rays are really good at looking at, for example, the crystal structure of how a material is and that's really looking at where the atoms are. Well, this beamline is different because we can not only see where the atoms are in a material but where the electrons are. So here what we're trying to do is get superconductors, which are materials that, where the current flows, you get no loss. We're trying to push the high temperature up to the highest that it can possibly be. These are materials which the theory of physics is still catching up with and how, they, how that operates. They're also important materials for, say, new sensors, for electrical power distribution, which is really important to meet the energy needs of the nation, to not waste so much power transmitting it around the country. The primary focus in uh, life science research is in structural biology. The primary technique that researchers use is protein crystallography to look at the atomic resolution of structures. Once you know the structure, you can then understand its function and do things like develop drugs to treat diseases. There are a number of challenges in the field when it comes to doing protein crystallography and understanding protein structure, one of which is they very often have very tiny protein crystals and they need very tiny beams of light to study them. The second one is they're very off often interested in protein complexes, so not just individual proteins. So these are big things, and in order to do that, there are a few number of molecules in the probing beam, and so they need these bright synchrotron beams to study them. And thirdly, they want to stand, understand how they function, how they're actually moving in the human body. And so those three challenges are things that can really be addressed by the very high brightness um, and coherent beams of synchrotron light. So we're using NSLS2 to study both Alzheimer's disease and ALS in, because we're interested in understanding the process of protein misfolding and metal accumulation in these diseases. When the proteins misfold and metals accumulate in the disease, it causes brain cell death. And what we can do with these very tiny beams of synchrotron, uh, both x-rays and infrared light, is understand how the chemistry of the cells change and how the um, metals within the cells and the protein misfolding are actually toxic. Hard X-ray nanoprobe beamline is basically a giant X-ray microscope. Unlike an ordinary optical microscope, it utilizes high penetrating power of hard X-rays to see things deep under their material surface and analyze details about materials. The most unique feature of the hard X-ray nanoprobe beamline is to produce 
a smallest beam in the world and use it for creating X-ray images. This impressive capability was a result of three important ingredients. One, brightest X-ray beam at the NSLS-2. Two, two, a new class of nanofocusing X-ray optic called multilayer Lowry lens. Three, a new generation X-ray microscope instrument that we have developed that allows scientists to carry out a very reliable uh, X-ray imaging measurements with the stability and accuracy down to about one nanometer. The NSS2 is a user facility, that means we built it for other people to use. The way they use it is they write a proposal, if that reviews well, they can come and use it for free. And those people may come from industry or from academia or from other national labs. When NSS2 is fully built out, we should have up to 60 beam lines, we'll be the brightest synchrotron in the world. We should be having 4,000 users a year coming through here, and they should be producing very high impact science. We really want them to transform their disciplines using experiments they've carried out here.